Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Dayan Chita. Tonight, I would like to talk about a technique, a technique popular in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, Lojong, which is Tibetan for mind training. In Lojong, you use slogans in order to cultivate compassion and bodhicitta and reduce attachment to ego. Remember the slogans, recall them at appropriate moments, and implement them. Lojong is a type of mindfulness practice, and as we all know, mindfulness is a translation of the Pali Sati or the Sanskrit Smriti, but Buddhist mindfulness includes both a Smriti and Sampranjanya, clear comprehension. Smriti Sampranjanya isn't just present moment awareness, but present moment awareness with a purpose, and that purpose is to continually guard against the kleshas or defilements. So I think of it as more as vigilance than just mindfulness in the sense that ordinary people think of, of a minding and a reminding. We're always looking out for kleshas to appear so we can attach, attack them. So there are 59 traditional slogans in Lojong, but you don't need to use all of the traditional slogans, and I use others as well. So traditional ones include such slogans as, regard all dharmas as dreams, and always maintain only a joyful mind. My personal Lojong slogans include, things don't bother us, only our judgments about them, from the Stoic philosopher Epictetus, and all dichotomies are false dichotomies, a more specific application, perhaps, of Xin Xin Ming's not to. But here I want to demonstrate how I worked with one of the traditional slogans to significantly reduce my uh, conditioned, angry, and egoistic reactions to the world. And that slogan is, meditate upon whatever provokes resentment. Meditate upon whatever provokes resentment. And what used to provoke a lot of resentment for me is other drivers. Uh, they, they cut me off in traffic. They merge onto the interstate at 15 miles per hour. Uh, they stay in the passing lane without passing. You name it, it probably provoked resentment. And as part of the Lojong practice, I usually employ a, a analytical meditation. So Lojong plus analysis. So let, let's consider the person swerving recklessly in front of my car, cutting me off in traffic. That provoked resentment, so I began meditating upon it. The main question is, what exactly is provoking resentment? Is it the other driver? Are they just inherently a jerk? We know that can't be true. Uh, in his Guide to the Way of the Bodhisattva, a key text in Tibetan Buddhism, Shantideva encourages us to exchange self for other as a meditation towards bodhicitta. What happens if I try to put myself in that other driver's place? When might I do something like that? So maybe the other driver is rushing someone to the emergency room. It doesn't take a lot of equanimity to understand that rushing someone to the ER is more important than whether I'm a minute later to my destination. Maybe the driver is rushing to work and unlike me will be fired if they're late. Maybe the driver just isn't paying sufficient attention and is oblivious to everyone else. It's not like I've never been distracted while driving. So unless I believe I'm just inherently a jerk, uh, which could be true, exchanging self for other and giving the other's actions the benevolent interpretation I'd give my own helps. There's also a, a karmic analytical meditation. So what happens if I retaliate or seek revenge? What karmic effects might that have? What if I road raged and started driving aggressively to try to teach that driver a lesson, maybe cutting them off in revenge or something like that? What happens then? I get angry, maybe they get angry, maybe they take that out, anger out on people around them instead of me, maybe I crash and get hurt. All aggressive actions will lead to unskillful karma. Or the compassionate analysis. Let's take the least charitable interpretation of the situation, that this person is just a jerk who consistently and deliberately drives like this. In that case, would it be better to pity the person who's so entangled in ego and attachment rather than get angry at them? Indeed, in all of these cases, it's probably more logical from a Zen perspective to feel compassion for them rather than anger. They're suffering in some way or they wouldn't drive like that. Let's go further. Instead of just cultivating compassion for them, perhaps I should be grateful to them. Dantadeva also argues that we should be grateful for people who annoy us because they help teach us patience, one of the six perfections. After all, 
the driver cutting me off has provoked not just resentment, but because of Lojong practice has provoked meditation as well. Meditation that has ironically lessened resentment, anger, indeed my conditioned unskillful reaction to the world. Instead of growing angry, I grow more patient every time I meditate upon this. Erratic driver, thank you for your teaching. Pursue these analytical meditations to the limit, we see reality more clearly. Seeing more clearly, it's not the driver or the driver's actions that provoked resentment at all. After all, if that driver had cut someone else off in traffic, I probably wouldn't care. So the resentment isn't in the driver, but in my mind. Resentment that the world isn't exactly the way I want it to be at all times. My ordinary dukkha. They cut me off in traffic. How dare that person even be out on the highway when I have places to go? Why didn't they stay home and let me have the road to myself? The resentment isn't about erratic driving, but always about my own ego being offended that the universe doesn't always conform to its selfish expectations. How dare it? All of this meditation doesn't happen at the moment, of course, but comes later, at least at first. However, when we follow the Lujong slogan, always train with slogans, and train with this slogan, whatever, whenever something happens that provokes resentment, we remember to meditate upon it. Uh, gradually, what happens in the provocative instant, instant isn't just remembering the slogan and being vigilant against the defilements. In addition, all the previous meditation and analysis come to mind. The five words of the slogan bring to mind an entire way of thinking where compassion begins and ego ends. It's a long process though. Like developing any good habit, it takes time. In this case, Lojong uses right mindfulness, right action, right view, and right intention to cultivate the virtues of compassion and patience and to lessen the attachment to ego. Each time we meditate upon resentment brings us a little closer to an entire new way of viewing the world. So now, if I'm cut off in traffic, I don't get resentful, usually. Those erratic drivers are just as conditioned as I am, just with just as much right to be on the road as I have. Whether they are distracted or careless or just egoistic, I try to think of them with compassion rather than just dismissing them as jerks. That is, if I even notice it anymore. Uh, on the other hand, those people who stay in the passing lane without passing, well, maybe they are just jerks. Uh, thank you for listening.